According to a report on November 9 from the American Diplomat website, Intel, the American chip manufacturer, has shelved its investment plan that could have nearly doubled its production scale in Vietnam. This is a significant setback for Vietnam's ambition to enter the global semiconductor supply chain currently. Intel has a factory in Ho Chi Minh City with a total investment of $1.5 billion, inaugurated in 2010, serving as its largest chip assembly, packaging, and testing facility. According to the Vietnam Express website, the factory employs 2,800 staff and has shipped over 3 billion products in its more than 10 years of operation. In February of this year, Reuters reported that Intel was considering a $1 billion investment for the expansion of this factory. Vietnam hosts Intel's chip assembly, packaging, and testing factory, and has been hoping for Intel to increase its capacity. Especially after President Biden's visit to Vietnam in September, where he expressed support for Vietnam's semiconductor industry development. Furthermore, amidst political risks and strained trade relations, Vietnam actively positions itself as an alternative choice outside of mainland China and Taiwan. However, shortly after Biden's visit, Intel had already put the expansion plan on hold. Why did Intel make such a choice? Expanding an existing factory should be more cost-effective than building a new one. What are the fatal weaknesses of Vietnam if it wants to become the world's factory? Today, I will share my perspectives with you. Let's begin. Currently, Intel has not provided an explanation for cancelling the expansion plan. We can speculate boldly that the stability of Vietnam's power supply must be a crucial factor. In fact, this issue has always existed for foreign investors in Vietnam. In recent years, the rapid economic growth in Vietnam has put severe pressure on its power network. In May of this year, a heatwave swept across Southeast Asia, with Vietnam reaching a record high temperature of 43.8. Under the scorching heat, a battle for electricity ensued. Residents using air conditioners and fans to combat the heat, coupled with the prolonged high temperatures causing low river levels, forced several hydropower stations to shut down, exacerbating the already challenging power supply situation. Since early May, the power supply in certain regions of Vietnam has been intermittent, sometimes without prior notice. Even major foreign investors like Foxconn and Canon in the northern industrial belt are not receiving special treatment. Mandatory 24-hour rotational power outages are in effect. Most of these factories are concentrated in the Bac Jong province, equipped with automated assembly lines or high-power machinery, resulting in an extremely high demand for electricity. According to the power department's statistics, the electricity supply gap in the entire northern region reaches a staggering 8,000 megawatts. In the late hours, the Cannon factory in Vietnam remains brightly lit, with production line workers tirelessly working overtime. Due to frequent power outages, factories can only operate after 10.30 p.m., attempting to compensate for the lost productivity during the day when electricity is scarce. Foxconn, Samsung Electronics, Lux Share Precision, they are all forced to halt operations during the busiest times and the power shortage plagues all factories in Vietnam, factories burdened with orders have become like ants on a hot pot, and the government, relying on tax revenue and employment, is equally anxious, working overnight to find a solution. From the initial, factories use electricity during the day, residents use electricity at night approach, it has shifted to after approval, allowing some factories to cease daytime production but permitting work from midnight until dawn, however, the consequence of such measures is a significant decrease in capacity and efficiency compared to before. As a country heavily reliant on exports, Vietnam's manufacturing industry cannot sustain continuous operations, leading to irreversible losses. Traditional labor-intensive sectors such as textiles and footwear suffer the most, followed by electronics and components throughout. The impact of high temperatures on power supply has consistently been a critical issue for Vietnam's manufacturing industry. I in the midst of urgency, Vietnam turns to its old neighbor, China. Since the formal initiation of reforms and openness in 1986, Vietnam's industrial parks have been increasing, and as of 2019, the country has 307 industrial parks nationwide. These parks once attracted factories originally stationed in China. In 2010, Samsung relocated from China to Vietnam, followed by other major factories contributing to Vietnam's GDP growth of over 6.5% for five consecutive years. 
In Europe and America, Vietnam's manufacturing is on the rise. As the country strives to replace China and seize the title of the world's factory. Now, with the power crisis, Vietnam exposes the crisis hidden within its own manufacturing industry. I end this situation. Is China willing to extend a helping hand? On May 23, a representative from the Vietnamese power sector hastily traveled to Dongxing City in Guangxi, China, and headed straight to the Guangxi Power Grid Company. Surprisingly successful negotiations led to the signing of the 110 kV deep gully to Mang Cai, interconnected power grid project purchase agreement on the same day. According to the agreement, starting from May of this year, electricity will be supplied to Vietnam in stages, with the first phase providing up to 68 million kilowatt hours. This is equivalent to the daily electricity consumption of over 150,000 households and a population of more than 450,000. In fact, this is not the first time China has supplied electricity to Vietnam. From 2005 to 2016, Guangxi, China, provided over 1.1 billion kilowatt hours of electricity to Vietnam through the China-Vietnam power grid interconnection. After a gap of seven years, Vietnam once again approached China, expressing the need to resume power grid interconnection. And behind this request lies Vietnam's persistent issue, an unstable infrastructure. As of now, Vietnam's total installed power capacity is approximately 70 gigawatts, with hydropower accounting for around 20 gigawatts, coal power 20 gigawatts, and solar power soaring from 105 megawatts in 2018 to 16 gigawatts in 2020. In terms of electricity generation, hydropower and coal power dominate with hydropower being highly susceptible to extreme weather, and coal, the primary source of which requires importation. According to Refinitiv's data, coal imports reached 4.5 million tonnes, the highest level since June 2020. Despite this, the power generated since May is still less than half of what is needed during peak periods. Vietnam is currently industrializing and growing into a crucial player in Asia's economy forming an integral part of the global manufacturing industry. The overall impact of power supply on the economy is much greater than it was 10 or 15 years ago. If the strained power supply is a major test for Vietnam, it appears that Vietnam has not passed the exam this time. This serves as a reminder to foreign companies investing in Vietnam that their expectations for the business environment in Vietnam may have been too optimistic. This brings us to a fundamental question, what does manufacturing rely on? Is it cheap labor? Of course, that is crucial, but well-developed infrastructure is evidently more important, especially power facilities. Semiconductor manufacturing, in particular, is an energy-intensive industry from the revealed power shortage issue. It is evident that the operation of Vietnam's manufacturing industry is currently on thin ice. In both the political and business circles of Vietnam, there was once an ambitious aspiration to surpass China in manufacturing, but strength that keeps up with ambitions is evidently more important. Everything needs to be backed up by capability. The power shortage dilemma brought about by the prosperity of the manufacturing industry is a challenge China has also faced. After joining the WTO in 2001, the power consumption in China's eastern coastal region surged. For instance, Guangdong province actively proposed the need to add 10 million kilowatts of electricity annually. How to ensure power supply keeps pace with the manufacturing industry? The solution decided by China's planners was the West East Electricity Transmission. From generation to transmission, and the coordination among provinces, this was once a headache-inducing plan for power experts. On this foundation, China developed the ultra-high voltage, UHV, Power transmission technology, 1,000 kV UHV can transport 6 million kilowatts of electricity, over 5,000 kilometers with a loss of only 15%. Today, UHV has become a technological showcase for China, with multiple countries, including Pakistan and Cambodia, benefiting from China's UHV power supply technology. Although the base is much larger, China's GDP growth rate from 2016 to 2021 is still higher than Vietnam's. Present-day Vietnam is more akin to the early days of China's reform and opening up, where the processing industry flourished in the Pearl River Delta. Therefore, China's assistance to Vietnam in the power sector indicates a situation, despite competition, among China's current opponents. Vietnam is not standing at the forefront. Meanwhile, 
Vietnam's cumbersome bureaucratic system is also a significant challenge for foreign companies doing business in Vietnam. Due to time constraints, we won't discuss this today. In summary, Intel's decision is a significant setback for Vietnam. Over the past year, the Vietnamese government has been launching a comprehensive charm offensive towards foreign chip manufacturers. Hoping to attract investment in all three major stages of chip manufacturing, including the construction of high-cost chip foundries. Now it seems that things are not going as smoothly, and progress needs to be made step by step. This concludes today's discussion. See you tomorrow.